Hello everybody and welcome to my Ravnica Remastered Draft Guide. In this video I will be providing you with all of the information you need to find success in your Ravnica Remastered Drafts. The first thing you need to know about Ravnica Remastered is that it is a reprint set, which means every card in the set is a reprint. As a result, there are over two dozen keywords and mechanics, so be prepared for increased complexity. Luckily, even though the cards feature tons of mechanics, the archetypes will guide you towards the types of effects you want to put in your deck. Because of this, the first thing we are going to discuss are the 10 two-color archetypes in the set, often referred to as Ravnica Guilds. Red-White, or Boros, is an aggressive deck that cares about playing small creatures and swinging for the win before your opponent can stabilize. Sky Knight Legionnaire is an incredible common for this deck, so keep an eye out for this evasive haster that will lead your troops to victory. Blue-Black, or Demir, is a typical control deck, which means it tries to stabilize the board and then win with card advantage in the late game. Night Veil vale Predator is great in this deck because it is nearly impossible to interact with, making it a brick wall for small attackers and a great evasive finisher late. Green-White, or Selesnia, is a deck that cares about making a huge board state with tokens. These tokens can be used as part of a go-wide aggressive strategy, but if you have repeatable token makers, like Selesnia Evangel, you can overwhelm your opponents in the late game as well. Blue-Red, or Is It, is a deck that cares about slinging spells, featuring tons of instants and sorceries. The more you can fit into your deck, the merrier, and a card like a Crackling Drake will be a massive threat if you build your deck well. Green-Black, or Golgari, is a mid-range deck that cares about filling your graveyard and then using it for value as you grind your way to victory. Golgari Findbroker is the perfect card for this deck because it is an excellent value creature that leverages your well-stocked graveyard to bring back whatever permanent you might need. Blue-White, or Azorius, is an aggro strategy that uses flyers and tempo spells to keep your opponents off-balance while you swing for the win in the skies. Sphinx of New Prov is a perfect threat because it has evasion, is incredibly difficult to interact with, and it even has vigilance to help you win your races. Red-Green, or Grull, is all about playing big creatures and attacking with them. Sunder Shaman is the perfect card for this deck because it is absolutely massive, almost impossible to kill in combat, and ends the game in a hurry. Black-White, or Orzov, is a grindy deck that tries to slowly squeeze the life out of its opponents with incremental value. Blind Hunter is great in this strategy, as an evasive threat that will provide a huge life total swing even if it dies, buying you more time and chipping away at your opponent. Green-Blue, or Simic, is a value deck that also features a plus one plus one counter theme. Sharkto Crab is excellent in this strategy as a massive creature that provides tempo advantage, and it does even more work if you can find extra ways to put counters on it. Finally, Black Red, or Rakdos, is an aggressive deck that wants to deploy its cards as quickly as possible to end the game in a hurry. Gobhobbler Rats is the perfect two drop for this strategy because it is a nice creature to play on curve, but once you empty your hand, it becomes a threat that is almost impossible to deal with. Now that we've covered the main archetypes, I want to go over some top commons that fit nicely into multiple strategies and are worth taking early. If you see them late, you can even view them as signals. First up is White. At number 1 is Faith's Fetters, which is a removal spell that provides a huge life total boost as well. It's a bit on the expensive side at 4 mana, but its ability to help you stabilize or win a race makes it worthwhile. At number 2 is Azorius Arrester a 2-drop that can temporarily remove pesky blockers or attackers. It's flexible enough to be worth prioritizing in any white strategy, especially since it only costs 2 mana. At a number 3 is Conclave Equinaut, which is a bit more narrow, but excellent when it works. If you're trying to pressure your opponent, and especially if you have tokens running around, Equinaut is a great top-end threat that you can often play way ahead of schedule. Moving on to blue, at number 1 we have Cloudfin Raptor. While some controlling decks won't prioritize this as highly, the upside of being able to deploy a 1-mana creature that grows into a 2-3 flyer or even bigger without much effort is fantastic, and Cloudfin is worth prioritizing as a result. At number 2 is Repeal, a flexible bounced spell that replaces itself. Resetting a creature with counters, blowing out an aura, or straight up killing a token are all viable ways to use this spell, and even though it can be costly as X grows, drawing a card is awesome upside. Number 3 is Compulsive Research, which provides a tremendous amount of card advantage for just 3 mana. In the late game, when you have no need for lands, this is almost as good as a 3 mana draw 3, and in the early game, it still digs a good way through your deck. Next up is Black, and at number 1 is Blade Juggler, 
When you cast this for its spectacle cost, it feels almost unbeatable, and spending 5 mana for it still gives you a reasonable effect. Overall, that's a pretty good deal at common. Number 2 is Last Gasp, which is an efficient instant speed removal spell, just what the Doctor ordered. At number 3 is Thrill Kill Assassin, which is a great 2-drop for both aggressive and defensive decks, thanks to its combination of Death Touch and Unleash. Simple, but effective. Moving on to red, at number 1 is Skewer the Critics. 3 mana to deal 3 is solid, but the fact that you can often cast this for just 1 mana makes it truly premium. Number 2 is Wojek Bodyguard, which is an excellent threat for your aggressive decks. If you have Wojek, it is good to prioritize haste creatures, so you can still attack with it even if your opponent kills your other threats. The upside is tremendous though, so Wojek is still worth the potential downside. At number 3 is Burning Prophet, which can filter through your deck while being a decently sized attacker. It needs you to have some non-creatures, but if your deck meets that criteria, it's an excellent turn to play. Last up, we have green, and at number 1 is Band Together. It lets you leverage your creatures to take down bigger threats, or protects you against your opponents killing one of your creatures in response to the spell. Green doesn't get much removal, so this is a nice one to prioritize. At number 2 is Drudge Beetle, which is a 2-drop that provides you additional value in the late game. As a result, it's a card you're happy playing in any deck, and it gets even better if you have ways to incidentally mill yourself. Coming in at number 3 is Krakonura. While a 3-mana 1-3 isn't a great rate, a 3-mana 2-4 reach is reasonable, and once it becomes a 3-5, you're very happy to have this Crocodile Frog. Now that we've discussed the archetypes and the top commons, we'll wrap up this draft guide with some key info. First up, these are the common combat tricks in the set. It's good to be aware of them, so if your opponent makes a suspicious attack, you'll know the most likely cards they could have. I included a couple creatures on this list, since Orzov Euthanist essentially gives Death Touch but does it post-combat, and Rubble Belt Maka will often be used for its Blood Rush ability. The final trick that is especially noteworthy is Gather Courage, because it can be cast with no lands available if your opponent has an untapped green creature. Be careful! Next is the mana fixing in the set. Ravnica Remastered is a little unique because instead of a basic land, each pack contains a mana slot card. 58% of the time, this will be one of the guild gates, like Azorius Guild Gate, which are tapped lands for each color pair. 33% of the time, this slot will be a signet, like Grohl Signet, which are artifacts that produce guild colors, again, one for each color pair. The remaining 9% you will get a Shockland or Chromatic Lantern, which are rares that are good for mana fixing. Outside of the special mana slot card, there is one common that helps with fixing, open the gates. It's a decent way to enable a splash if you need to. One final note about the mana slot card system is that if you get past a pack that doesn't have a gate or a signet, you will know the person passing to you took a land or signet, which can certainly be relevant information. Moving on to some final tips, and the first one is that staying open is better than normal because there are more strong cards that only fit in certain decks. Cards in this set are much more color intensive, which means if you find an open lane, you can get rewarded with cards like Crackling Drake for your blue-red deck much later than you would find cards of similar power level in other sets. Even at common rarity, there are cards like Sky Knight Legionnaire, which are excellent in their color pair and unplayable in any other strategy. This is further reason to stay open, read signals, and figure out which color combo is the most open. You can get incredibly rewarded for being flexible. Finally, I want to mention one last archetype you can sometimes draft if it comes together. With enough fixing, especially guild gates, going for multicolor good stuff can be viable. There are plenty of powerful things to do within the guilds, and you do miss out on some of the most color-intensive multicolor cards by stretching your mana base. But if you are drawn to a strategy that features ambitious splashing with lots of different colors, there are certainly tools to facilitate that if you prioritize lands and draft a couple of payoffs like Gate Colossus. Anyway, that is going to do it for this draft guide. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, remember to hit that like button, subscribe for more videos, comment if you have any questions or feedback, and to let me know you made it all the way till the end of the video, leave hashtag ready for Ravnica in the comments section down below. I hope you feel prepared to dive into your Ravnica remastered drafts. I hope you enjoyed this draft guide, and I will see you on Ravnica.